This is the Jamaica Information Service, the, the voice of Jamaica. Jamaica. You're inside Jamaica Magazine. Encouraging the information flow, sharing the news and views you need to know. We are building an informed Jamaica every day. Listening, Listening to, to what, what you say. say. It's Thursday, November 26. Thanks so much for opening the covers of today's edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm your host, Samantha Allen. Coming up, President Kikweta welcomes Jamaican investments in Tanzania before his departure from the island. Parliamentarians pledge their support for strengthened relations between Jamaica and Tanzania and a monument in honor of late sports legend Herb McKinley unveiled. Later, the promotion of consumer protection in the Caribbean is discussed in this week's Issues and Answers segment. Do stay with us. The news in details after the break. that you can help to reduce the spread of influenza A H1N1 in Jamaica by taking the following precautionary measures. If you are sick, limit your contact with other people as much as possible. Do not go to work. Stay at home until you are fully recovered. Cover your mouth and nose with a mask or tissue when coughing or sneezing. Throw the used tissue in the waste basket. Then wash your hands with soap and water and do so every time you cough or sneeze. Remember, prevention is always better than cure. So protect yourself and your family from the influenza A H1N1 virus. A message from the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica. And now the news. Tanzanian President Jakaya Kikwete departed the island early this afternoon after a four-day state visit to Jamaica. He will be heading to the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in Trinidad. Prime Minister Bruce Golding will lead Jamaica's delegation at that conference. Yesterday afternoon, when President Kikwete addressed a joint sitting of both Houses of Parliament, he pledged to form a partnership with Jamaica in the areas of tourism and agriculture, among others. Andrea Chisholm was also in Gordon House. It was an occasion fit for royalty. Members of the Jamaica Constabulary and Defence Forces decked in their respective uniforms and the literal rollout of the red carpet. One by one, top-level officials entered Gordon House. And then the main entrance, that of the Tanzanian president himself. President Jakaya Kikwete told the Joint Houses of Parliament that Jamaica reminds him of his country, Tanzania. The main purpose of his visit, to consolidate cooperation between both countries. He outlined a number of areas on which a partnership can be developed. One such area is that of trade and investment. You have a vibrant tourism industry, which I want Tanzanians to come and learn from your good examples, which made you so successful. We would like to see Jamaicans and Jamaican business, businesses come and invest in Tanzania. They could do so, they could do so in tourism, in the tourism industry, and in any, in any other sectors of their choice. There are abundant opportunities in agriculture, in mining, in manufacturing, as well as in the services like ICT, health, education, etc. Sports was also high on the agenda. Jamaica is the fastest men and women on this planet. The Tanzanian president further boasts that citizens of his country are big fans of reggae music, particularly reggae icon Bob Marley. 
Jakaya Kikwete also called for greater collaboration between both countries' parliaments and a closer relationship with various government agencies and departments. He cited five main principles on which Tanzania's democracy is based. These include respect for human rights and the rule of law, transparency and accountability in government, an independent judiciary, separation of power, and speedy conflict resolution. For JIS News, I'm Andrea Chisholm. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Bruce Golding says the government is committed to supporting President Kikwete. The Prime Minister was also addressing yesterday's special joint sitting of Parliament. He points out that Jamaica and Tanzania have already identified areas of mutual cooperation. Mr. Golding says despite Tanzania's challenges, the country and its people continue to aim for the best. We commend you on the ambitious program of transformation you have undertaken. Economic liberalization, painful but necessary structural and fiscal reforms, tax reform, diversification of your economy, privatization, and the strong support you have given to the private sector. You have done well. You have succeeded in maintaining low inflation, strong investment flows, robust international reserves, and an average annual growth rate of 7% over the past decade. Prime Minister Golding adds that both countries will continue to work together to fulfill the hopes and dreams of Pan-Africanists like Marcus Mazaya Gavi. We have never forgotten that our roots are embedded in Africa. And no matter how vast the oceans that separate us, we are family and we welcome you as a member of the family. Opposition leader Portia Simpson Miller shared a similar sentiment. She has also pledged her support to the government and people of the East African country. We stand ready to support any initiative and areas of cooperation entered into between the governments of Jamaica and Tanzania. We feel that it is full time to Mr. President and you indicated that you have an office established in Jamaica that would serve this region. Yeah. May the relationship between our two countries continue to grow from strength to strength. The late Jamaican track and field legend Herbert Henry McKinley has been honored with a monument at the National Stadium. Affectionately called Herb or Mr. Mac, the statue in his memory was unveiled last evening by Prime Minister Bruce Golding and visiting president of Tanzania, Jakaya Kikwete. The monument is mounted next to other statues in tribute to great sports stars. It was crafted by artist Basil Watson. He spent countless hours with promising but unknown young athletes. He was for so many of them coach, mentor, and inspirer. His faith in the ability of our young men and women never wavered. He knew that we could challenge the best in the world and that eventually we would dominate the world. Several representatives of the local athletic fraternity were also present at the unveiling ceremony. McKinley died exactly two years ago. He won four Olympic medals, one of which was gold at the 1952 Helsinki Games. McKinley produced one of the greatest relay legs of all times to help Jamaica take the 4x400 meter relay in world record time. <laughs> Prime Minister Bruce Golding has welcomed Digicel's decision to move their corporate head office to downtown Kingston. Digicel decided to move their offices to promote efficiency and assist the government in its thrust to revitalize the city. The telecommunications giant is currently in the final stages of negotiating and carrying out feasibility studies on a plot of land right on the waterfront in downtown Kingston. It's against this background that Prime Minister Bruce Golding and Digicel's group chief Chief Executive Officer Colm Delves decided to tour the Coronation Market this week. The market is located in downtown Kingston. The aim was to get a feel of the area, particularly the market facilities, and develop a relationship with the vendors. 
The Jamaica Civil Aviation Authority, the JCAA, is on a drive to cut costs and reduce maintenance expenditure on its navigation systems. That was outlined this week.